Okay, we're going to continue with module 21. Now we're going to do this example following the same procedure as the previous example. So in order to take the square root on both sides, I do need to isolate the term that has the square. So I'm going to add 48 to both sides. Then I can apply the square root on both sides, making this plus or minus. Um, square root of 48 is actually equal to square root of 3. Here the house will go away. The house and the exponent will go away, leaving me with just the w minus 1. So therefore I don't need the parentheses anymore, right? Um, here I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And so we know the formal rate way to write it is to write the positive 1 in the front, plus or minus in the middle, and then the equal part in the back. So and when I go to write this, um, we have two answers to check, right? We have 1 plus or, or not plus or minus. We have 1 plus 4 square root 3 minus 1 squared minus 48 equal to 0. So I'm plugging in the positive version of this into this original equation. Then the 1's will cancel, leaving me with positive 4 square root of 3 squared which is 4 squared or 3 squared which is 16 times 3 which is 48 and 48 minus 48 isn't equal to 0 so the positive version checks out, checks out. in order to check the negative version it would be 1 minus 4 squared or 3 so then when these cancel, I'm going to have a negative 4 squared of 3 there, which means in this parentheses I'm going to have a negative 4 squared, but that will still result in positive 16, which will still result in 48 minus 48. So the positive version checks out as well. So remember, depending on if Alex has the plus or minus button as an option in the text uh, solution, you can type in 1 plus or minus 4 squared is your answer. But if this button is not available, then you do have to type in each answer individually with a comma in between. So it all depends on if Alex enables you to click the plus or minus button or not. Okay, completing the square. This is something completely new, right? We don't have any previous knowledge based on completing the square. However, when you get to college algebra, which is pretty soon, um, you're going to be expected to complete the square a lot at the beginning. So we definitely need to get this um, concept down. Okay. Now, um, the process of completing the square, there's like a formula to figuring out what goes into this box. Okay. As long as you have the problem in this form, okay, there's no number in front of x squared. As long as there's no number in front of x squared, basically what you do is the magic number that goes in the box that you'll need to complete the square comes from that b, that coefficient, over 2 squared. Okay? Um, and I'll explain what completing the square means. What it means is that they want to turn this into x plus something squared. Okay? They want to turn that expression into there. But what they want first is what would the number here have to be so that when I FOIL this all out, I get this expression. Okay? Um, and so for this particular case, because my b is positive 6, I would have to do positive 6 over 2 squared, which means 3 squared, which is equivalent to 9. So 9 is what would go in here. And in order for me to figure out what would go in here, 
you just take what was inside the parentheses. So this number there before I squared it, that's what goes inside the parentheses, a three. And let's verify, right? If I were to FOIL out x plus three times x plus three, I would get x squared plus three x plus three x plus nine, which is x squared plus six x plus nine, which is exactly what we have up there, okay? But I needed to figure out what that magic number would be so that this would all play out, okay? So you're gonna use two parts, right? When I do this step here, I'm going to have um, two parts to the solution. I'm going to have what's inside the parentheses will go inside the parentheses in my perfect square. And then the result of computing this entire thing is the number that I need to complete the square. Okay. So here we'll have to do the same thing, right? Um, we'll have to figure what that one is. So if I take negative 9 over 2 and I square it, there's no simplifying negative 9 over 2. So the only thing I can do is square it. What is negative 9 squared and 2 squared? Well, that's positive 81 over 4. So what goes in my answer box? 81 over 4. Now that's all that they're asking me to do for this um, problem, okay? They're not asking me to factor it, do anything like that, okay? However, in the next example, they do ask me to continue on with this process, okay? So remember, this says solving a quadratic by completing a square and they want exact answers only. And in the answer box, it gives you some su uh, suggestions. This is not colored in, it's just how I drew the circle. Um, so I guess I didn't draw it correctly the first time. But um, you'll have two options. You'll either have a plus or you'll have a minus. And then you need to fill in one of these boxes. Um, and then you'll and then e put what will be on the other side of the equation. And then you solve that and then you tell them what the solution is. So we're going to work this out so that we can match their formatting of how they want the answer. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is remember, I cannot actually find the number that completes the square until I have this by itself, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is actually add six to both sides. And remember, my job is to figure out what this magic number is gonna be, okay? What is the number that I'm gonna need here to complete the square, okay? Well, let's go figure that out. It would be negative four over 2 squared, which can be reduced to negative 2 squared, which equals 4. So that means I would have to add 4 here to complete the square. But remember, this is an equation. And if I add 4 to one side, in order to keep it equivalent, I have to also add 4 to the other side. So that now, on the left-hand side, I should be able to factor this into a perfect square. And remember, x goes in the front, and whatever was inside the parentheses before you squared it is what goes in here. So it would be minus 2. You could also factor it by hand, right? A negative 2 and a negative 2 multiplies to give you 4, and a negative 2 and a negative 2 combine to give you negative 4, and because you have this as your factors, you can rewrite it with a square, right? So whether you're factoring it by old school methods or you're using the little shortcut that I'm giving you, saying that it will always come out to be this middle number right there inside the parentheses with the x, either way you should be able to get to this um, line here, okay? Now just like the equations that we did before, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and when you do that you get plus or minus on the number, and let's see what is the square root of 10. It does not simplify, so it stays square root of 10. Then to solve for x, I'm going to have to add 2. Put the non-radical term in the front, positive 2. And then the plus or minus radical term in the back. Okay. 
So we've got two answers to check here, okay? Now this is gonna get a little bit um, complicated because we have two places that we have to plug in both of our answers. So let's see what we get when we plug in the first um, answer. So we're going to have 2 plus or minus square root of 10 squared minus 4, 2, not plus or minus, I have to choose one, plus, plus square root of 10 minus 6 equal to 0. So here I would have to FOIL this out. And here I just have to distribute, which I can do now if I choose to. And I do choose to. But here I have to FOIL it out. So 4 plus 2 square root of 10 plus 2 square root of 10 um, plus square 10 squared. So then let's see here, we get 4 plus 2 and 2 makes 4. These will make the house pop off. I have minus 8, minus 4, square root of 10, minus 6. These will cancel. And I have um, 14 minus 8, let's see what that is. 14 minus 8 minus 6. I get zero. So the positive version just check out. Now I don't want to redo all this writing all over again. So all I'm going to do is change the minus, the plus to a minus, and then do the same operations. So I will have two minuses here. And negative times a positive is negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Minus six still comes down. So I have four. I have now a negative 2 here, and I have now here a negative 2, and negative times a negative will still be a positive 10 square root of 10. Okay. Now over here, I'm still going to have this plus 4 square root of 10. So then when I combine these two, this is going to be a minus 4 square root of 10. Um, that will still be a positive 10 minus 8. This is now a positive 4 square root of 10 minus 6. So therefore, this one's negative. This one's positive now. Those will still cancel. And I still have in my calculator... Actually, I had 14 in my calculator before, which was wrong. It should have been 4 plus 10 minus 8 minus 6. Oh, I guess I had already combined these two. So yes, we get 0 equals 0. So both answers check out, which means um, 2 plus or minus square root of 10 is my answer. Or if I have to expand them, these two are my answers.